On today's episode of Locked on Angels, Michael Nelson Trout said, Clutch? I'll show you clutch. And he did something spectacular to help the Halos beat the Rays on Monday night. Plus, we're sharing what the Angels pitchers think is the cause for all the arm injuries. And John and I are going to share our thoughts on their thoughts. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John. And this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked on Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Every Day. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. From breaks to exhaust Exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your car running. And with all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to bring home that big W. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. The eBay guarantee fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. And Johnny, yesterday I got a phone call from the best father-in-law in the world, my father-in-law. My father-in-law? Oh, my oh, father-in-law. My bad. My bad. And he he said he ran into a great everydayer that listens to Locked On Angels. His name is Eric Lee. He lives in the same city that I live in. So I want to say hi and give a shout out to Eric Lee, a What's Locked up, On Everydayer. He loves the Angels and he loves Locked On Angels. So thanks for being here and thanks for being a part of this Halo community. Did he say which Super Halo bro was his favorite? What did he say? I'm sure it was me. I'm oh, sure it was me. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Biased father-in-law. Hey, uh, on today's show, uh, what do the Angels think is causing all the pitching injuries around the league? And do we agree? And also, we're going to kind of give our thoughts on the matter. But first, let's recap the game against the Rays, Mike. I wanted to start with something that Ron Washington had to say about Jackie Robinson on Jackie Robinson Day. Of course, everybody was wearing 42 out there. Looked great. An awesome day to celebrate Jackie Robinson Day. By the way, I don't think I've ever taken you to the Jackie Robinson statue outside City Hall, have I, here in Pasadena? No, no I didn't know oh, there was one down there. We got to go. Okay. Next, time, next time you guys come out here, we'll, we'll go. <laughs> I didn't know about that. That's cool. Yeah, my bad, and I'm not a baseball fan, apparently. I didn't take you <laughs> to the first spot we should go. But Ron Washington had this to say. He said, Jackie Robinson Day has a special meaning for him as a black man who played and managed in the major leagues. Wash said, I don't think I'd be sitting here managing and talking to you guys if it wasn't for Jackie Robinson breaking that barrier. Jackie was a class act. I don't think when I look at his story that I could have endured hmm. what he went through. And man, that's isn't that just such a huge part of what gets uh, not forgotten or glossed over, but just the fact is, yes, he broke the color barrier, but so much crap that he had to put up with. Yep in order to do that. And so it was just a great tribute from Ron Washington to, to say that before yesterday's game, man, having to go out there and play defense and hit the ball with all of this nonsense happening around him is unbelievable. So, I mean, even if he didn't have a great baseball career still should be in the hall of fame. He had a great baseball career, right? And he was because good. Of, just because <laughs> of what he had to put up with my favorite line from the movie 42 is when Pee Wee Reese comes over and stands with Jackie at first base. And he says, maybe one day we'll all wear 42 and they won't be able to tell us apart. Yeah. Loved that line super, and loved that good. movie. Yeah, absolutely. So good. Let's get into the uh, the win yesterday, Mike. The Angels yeah, took on the win. Rays. Uh, big o- series opening win. Now, can we just have like at least one more win? <laughs> yes. For the love our of, hopes up, right? <laughs> for the love of God, Angels. Uh, seven to three win. This was a uh, a nice way to pick up game one in the series, right? Yeah, Patrick Sandoval was on the mound. Five innings, four hits, one run, two walks, three Ks, 93 pitches. John, I know that we've been really hard on Sandoval, so I decided when I watched this game, I was going to force myself to pick out what he did well. And Mm -hmm. it actually was pretty easy to pick it out because he did have a pretty good start. Uh, There were no base runners and no hits until the bottom of the fourth, Mm -hmm. and then he gave up his first hit. And Sandoval, uh, Sandoval threw a ball to the next batter after giving up that first hit. 
And Matt Theis immediately came out and had a good long chat with Patrick. And I, I really liked that. I mm. thought it showed great leadership on Theis's part, coming out there, calming him down. Hey, it's going to be okay. Following that chat, uh, he threw a fastball that was fouled away by Rosario, then a changeup that was fouled, then a sinker that was fouled. And then finally, Rosario singled to left. So he really fought off some good pitches. And I share all of that because it didn't sink Sandoval. He didn't lose it. He held yeah. it together mentally, calmed down, and he got the next batter to ground out. It was a much better approach by Patrick Sandoval in this game and in that in, in that particular inning. And then there's something similar happened, Johnny, in the bottom of the fifth. Sandoval loaded the bases. Yeah. He got a ground ball to short. Neto throws home and got the out. What a great defensive play. Yeah. The next batter bounced out to Sandoval. Now this was, I that, may, that sounds so simple, but it wasn't. It bounced over his head. He had to reach out with his it's glove. It's like a wide receiver out right. there. Yeah. Then he had to throw the ball to first, kind of side-armed it to first, got it over there. The run did score, but it was a great defensive play by Sandoval. And I don't think that the shortstop or the second baseman could have made that play because they had to come in so far. So great defensive awareness by Patrick Sandoval. Then he had Randy Arozarena at the plate. Mm -hmm. And you know, th that was that was a threat, <laughs> right? Team Mexico teammate, Randy yes. Arozarena. <laughs> and Sandoval got him to ground out to third and another inning with some trouble, but Sandy pitched around it with minimal damage. Johnny, he didn't allow an extra base hit in this game. He threw 59 strikes. What are your thoughts on the Patrick Sandoval that we saw last night? Well, he kept his cool in this one. Mm. And there were even moments where uh, one one that comes to mind that could have been one of those, like, he loses it on the mound moments was Joe Adele running all the way into foul territory to get that fly out. And he ran a long distance in right field and was able to run it down. And that was fantastic. And perhaps Mike, if he hadn't gotten that or it dropped in, yes, it wouldn't have been a hit, but it just seems like that's the kind of moment that would have caused Sandy to, to, to lose it out there. But here, here's one thing I noticed uh, the angels pitching staff had 11 ground ball outs in this one. Six wow. of them came from Patrick Sandoval, six ground ball outs. He had nine whiffs and 13 called strikes. So a total of 22 whiffs plus called strikes. So he was hitting the zone. And when you combine that with getting guys to ground out, I know he only went five innings and a lot of that was due to the bases loaded situation, but that's a much better way and more efficient way to get guys out when you're mixing in the strikeouts and you're mixing in the ground outs. I think it's just totally necessary for him to operate that way. So a much better outing from him. And I know you'd like to see somebody like that go more than five innings, but at this point with Patrick Sandoval, I'll take it at yeah. the, right now. <laughs> yeah. The offense really struggled in this game initially, but then there was a, a really good opportunity in the top of the eighth. Rendon gets a one out single. Then he moves to second base on a wild pitch and trout comes up with a chance to tie the game. Now, Remember, he was up in the ninth against the Red Sox and didn't come through, struck out against Kenley Jansen. And that matchup's not great for Trout. Right. But then there was a lot of conversation about him being clutch and has he ever come through and all of those things. And we mentioned it as well on mm -hmm. this broadcast. Trout's got to get Trout to the playoffs. What I appreciate about Mike Trout is that he stood in front of the media and he said, I didn't come through and I need to do better. Yeah, who was and it that, that ran from the media uh, certain... <laughs> This team up in Washington. I can't, it's on the tip of my tongue, Mike. I just can't remember it. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to continue. Uh, so he said, I, I need to do better. And he did. Last night hit a two-run home run. It was a curveball. Trout smashed it. 111.6 exit velocity. It made it two to one. And it was kind of the, the, the dam busted after that. Because mm -hmm. everything kind of started to move for the angels. They followed that home run by loading the bases with two outs. And then your boy, Matt Theis comes my up. Boy? Wait, what? <laughs> well, I can't, he can't be mine. I've, I've bagged on him too much oh, on the show, but he hits a three run double to give the halos a five to one lead, which add on runs, Johnny, that's what we've been asking for totally to this team. Right. Especially when the bases are loaded there that he was able to deliver in that moment because and a two out hit. Prior to that, we had a bases loaded moment where Mickey Moniak hit into a double play. And so yep. you thought, well, classic Angels baseball. So it was good to see Matt Theis come through. Bottom of the eighth, Mike, Matt Moore came in and gave up a two-run home run that made mm -hmm. it five to three, still in favor of the Angels. But if you go back and look at StatCast, it was a changeup, kind of at the knees, in on the hands, and just like had no business 
being hit out the way that it was. So yeah. it was essentially a, a, a golf swing, if you will. Um, but you know what? I tweeted this from Locked On Angels yesterday. I said, look, Matt Moore's going to have a bad inning here yeah. and there. And if you're going to have a bad inning, have it when you're yeah, up five to one. <laughs> yes. Right? right. And then right. he gets a Ron Washington pep talk. I love and those. Gets the next, They're my favorite. next few batters and gets through the inning. So that was fantastic. And then Taylor Ward was like, you know what, Matt? I'm going to get those runs back for you. I'm going to go out there and get those back. So Anthony Rendon in this one hits a double. And by the way, he's streaking right now. He's on fire, right. Anthony Rendon. Right. It was the standing ovation. Way to go, Angel fans. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, so he got on base, and then Taylor Ward hits a two-run home run to make yeah. it 7-3. to three. And then Estevez came in, closed it out. Uh, wasn't a safe situation, but you know what? With the way things have been going for the Angels, you got to take every win that you can. So I think it right. was good that SD came in in that moment. But yeah, uh, Anthony Rendon really uh, doing well at that leadoff spot all of a sudden. And again, right. it was since that that standing ovation. So he's hitting the ball well. Mike, what do you think about moving Trout and Ward up to, uh, a spot? Trout second, I think, it, I, Ward I think it's time. I think it's time to do that because I think you're putting, you want to put some of your best hitters at the top of the lineup. And we saw its impact already in yesterday's game. And I know it's just one game. I'd like to see them continue to do that. But I'm glad that Wash moved them around a bit. I'm still not a huge fan of having like Shauna will bat fifth and, and, and Sano cleaning up. I don't like any of that. Yeah. And so I, I still think that there are some, some pivots there. I know that they want Ohapi at the bottom of the lineup because he is young and they want him to develop. But I think that with the way that he's hitting, I think it's time to maybe start moving him up. If they don't do it this month, definitely next month, if he continues to hit well, which there's every indication that he will. And so I would say move him up a bit in the lineup because it extends that lineup from Trout, Ward and then Ohapi. And if Ohapi's maybe sixth or even fifth, I think mm -hmm. that's a good spot for him to be in. Miguel Sano was hitting rockets <laughs> off the bat yesterday, too. Got on base got, four times. Yeah, son. I got a couple of hits in that one. So uh I wasn't sure how I felt about him cleaning up either, but you know what? He was hitting the ball well. Something about something about Tampa. Yeah. It's just, it's just like so much field. Like it's just like you right. can hit that ball anywhere and run for days. And it just makes it through. Yeah. It didn't Otani Otani got a cycle there at one right. point, almost had another cycle there. Another because yeah. you can hit the ball in the gap and run for days. So, well, yeah, something about that Ray Stadium. I have a, I have a theory. Uh, Brother Jeff and I had this theory from years ago, late 90s, when Eric Karros was playing for the Dodgers. And we would always laugh that they had like Mike Piazza and some other great hitters, but Karros was always batting cleanup. And whenever we would play video games, we'd move him out of there because we didn't like him. We didn't yeah. like him. We thought he was terrible, right? No, he had a pretty good career. But whenever he bat cleanup, he would he would dominate. He'd hit a home run. He'd knock in four RBIs. And so there might be something about putting Sano at the cleanup spot where he's like, all right, they're going to count on me. Right. So I'm going to come through. Right. I know again, it's one game and I'm not a fan of him being there, but I'm, I'm thankful that he had a really good game last night on base four separate times. Definitely. Hey, thanks for making lockdown angels. Your first listen every single day. The angels are playing the Rays at three 50 Pacific time. Once again, today it's going to be Jose Soriano versus Aaron Savali. You can catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the YesXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. And coming up on Locked on Angels, what's causing all the arm injuries in baseball? Well, the Halos have some thoughts about the injuries, the Halos pitchers. And, of course, we've got some thoughts, too. And we're going to share all of those for you coming right up. Are you bored with board games? I know that sometimes they can be kind of boring unless you're – John and his wife, Abby, when they come over for Christmas time and bring all of the great board games and we Heck stay yeah. up until midnight, that's a lot of fun. But if you're bored with board, board games, you don't need to be anymore. You can just download Monopoly Go, one of the most popular, popular games on your mobile phone. Monopoly Go lets you complete and compete against your friends and family and work for the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly that you love, but it's on your phone anytime with tons of new twists including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies, causing your friends to go bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball and then charging other players rent for your iconic properties. I never got those iconic properties. I always, it was you, it was John. It was always you that got them. Park uh, place. Park Four place. Rock. John's place. That's always what it was. You can play countless on countless dynamic monopoly boards because it's all on your phone it's all digital it's a whole lot of fun and you can even work with your friends to crack open the community chests and in tournaments 
to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there. Don't be bored with board games. Play Monopoly Go and put your game face on right now. Download Monopoly Go right now. It's in the App Store and the Google Play Store. And today's show is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. You guys know how much Mike and I love Game Time. And the good news is, is they are now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes tickets getting ticket getting even faster and easier. Game Time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. With Game Time, you can get last minute deals on tickets, save up to 60% off for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, much more. I saw Counting Crows and Dashboard Confessional last year because of Game Time. Mike, you Woo. saw Nate, Nate Bargetzi at the Pond or the Honda Center. Uh, you're welcome, Anaheim fans. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Game Time. Save even more with exclusive in-app flash deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. You can save even more on zone deals when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats for you. They have all-in pricing. This feature shows the total upfront, so there's no surprise fees. At checkout, you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. And they have the lowest price guarantee, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Plus, with every purchase, you receive Game Time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticket, ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use our promo code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again. Locked on MLB gets you $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. The Locked On Podcast Network presents its NFL mock draft live on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. The mock draft will be streaming live on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. You can find the Ultimate Six episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. So once again, the Locked On NFL mock draft on April 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern, for Pacific, if you're living here in California, streaming live on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. The Angels are back at it at the Trop against the Rays today, 3.50 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Angel pitchers were asked about all of the injuries that pitchers are suffering and have been this year and in years past. And so a few of them had some thoughts. Matt Moore said, it's not so simple. It's too case by case to say why each person has gotten hurt. It's unfair to say it's just one specific thing. However, other angel pitchers gave their opinions and it came down to three things, John, not surprised the pitch timer velocity and the baseball's being used. So why don't you start with what Patrick Sandoval said about the pitch timer? Yeah, guess who had a problem? <laughs> I didn't even connect that to you. With the pitch timer. <laughs> Mr. Patrick Sandoval, shocker. Uh, he said, I think that's the obvious answer. The glaring thing that's different now is the pitch clock. I'm not a scientist or anything. Thank God. Uh, but I think I have an appropriate amount of time. Or I think having an appropriate amount of time to gather yourself in between pitches is probably beneficial to the players. It seems like the league obviously doesn't really care about that. Now, obviously mm -hmm. that question got asked because the players association was questioning MLB yeah. and looking into an inquiry of whether the pitch clock had something to do with that. And I think there's an argument to be made there, Mike. Sure. I think sure. it's, it's the one major change that's happened from 2022 to 23 and now 24, right? Yeah. Having said that, I think I agree with Matt more than that. It's it's a little more nuanced than that, but I think mm -hmm. probably has a big factor, especially for these guys, like he said, trying to gather themselves uh, between pitches. Now, uh, why don't you talk about what Gooby had to say? Mark Gubiza. Yeah. No, it's not nuanced, John. Everything's black and white. Don't you know that in our world? Yeah. Uh, so Gubiza talked about velocity, and he said when you're throwing full max every single pitch from bullpen sessions to game time action, it's taxing on your arm. I don't blame the pitchers at all. They're just being told to go out there and throw as hard as you can for as long as you can. Carlos Estevez, John, 
somewhat agrees. He also commented in the in the third category. We'll get to that in a second. But he said, if you're trying to throw harder and you're going to try to use more of your body, of course, you're going to get even more tired when you have less time between pitches. So he thinks that it's got to be both. Last is what many are talking about. And that was the baseballs, John. They're saying that the baseballs are differently. And Tyler Anderson had something to say about that. Yeah, he said every time he gets a new baseball from an umpire, it's a crapshoot. Sometimes it's like a college ball, he said, because the seams are so high and then I'll get one. And that's that's nice. This feels like the old days with no seams at all. They're definitely inconsistent. I don't remember them being as inconsistent. And Matt Moore also suggested that a change in the balls is what led to change in strategies for the hitters and the pitchers. He said the changing of the of the baseball has switched the approach of hitters. So now Mm. you're pitching more toward the swing and miss. It was never a good idea to hit the ball in the air for the longest time, but something changed objectively with the instruments we use. And that led to something else. So that's what the angels pitchers had to say about it. And I, I think the baseball, it just drives me absolutely insane. Mike, that Major League Baseball can't get consistency out of its baseballs, out of its uniforms. Like, it's just, man, man, this whole thing is an absolute mess. And I think that there's really good arguments to be made here by the Angels on all of these issues, the pitch clock, the baseballs, the velocity, all of that. So what do we think? Well, we're going to share one more major reason, and then we'll give you our thoughts in just a minute. Today's episode of Locked On Angels is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn. Salespeople, listen up. Those of you working in sales, LinkedIn has something for you. It's called LinkedIn Sales Navigator. The LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers. And in doing so, it's going to help you bring in higher revenue and increase your sales performance. Who doesn't want that? I know you want it. I know you're a salesperson. Come on, let's go. The The LinkedIn Sales Navigator helps you to target the right buyers, be aware of key signals like job changes or which accounts that you should prioritize. It also shows you hidden allies so that you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with people that matter. So right now you can try the sales navigator and get 60 days free, a free trial for 60 days at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60 day trial. Let the sales navigator from LinkedIn help you to sell like a superstar, the superstar that you are. Go to linkedin.com slash locked on to get started. Mike, one more opinion this time from a baseball writer. Jeff Passan of ESPN was on the Pat McAfee show. Uh, when he's not doing WWE, he's on his own show. <laughs> yes. uh, and he said that he thought it had to do with what happens before players get to the major leagues. Passan mm. shared that he's followed this for the last 10 years or so and discovered that little leagues are violating pitching requirements. Wow. Managers are asking eight-year-olds to do it at max effort with every pitch. It wouldn't be a problem, he said, but the managers are not giving the players the appropriate amount of time between starts. Really interesting from Jeff Passan, and I'm also not surprised. But Mike, what do you believe the problem is for the starting pitching or just the pitching in general causing all these injuries? I I just wonder if there's too much management happening right Mm. now. And and Shohei Otani being on the Angels and – really being managed when he first came to what they did with him the last couple of years is a prime example. Now I know that he did hurt his elbow, (laughs) you know, so my, my, my straw man falls apart pretty quick, but I think that what the angels did and what Shohei did was I think really important. I'll get to that in a minute, but I think pitch count pitching limit and maybe over analyzing and maybe being over concerned has gotten into the way. I might sound like a traditionalist, maybe an old time get up, you know, old time get off my lawn type of guy. But I, I just I wonder why someone like Nolan Ryan could complete twenty or two hundred and twenty two games that he started, could pitch into his mid forties, and why that's not happening today. Because that wasn't unique necessarily to Nolan Ryan. There were a lot of older pitchers that lasted for a really long time, and complete mm-hmm. games were things that happened more often in the past than they do, obviously in the present. So what were they doing then that isn't happening today? I I think maybe John, 
it was that Nolan Ryan and guys like Nolan Ryan were allowed to dictate what they're going to do with their body. I had, I had to think back, but in 1990, Nolan Ryan got hit in the lip on a ground ball from, from Bo Jackson, Mm -hmm. hit him on the lip, throws it to first, gets the runner out. And then he stayed in the game. And there's a yeah. picture. There's an iconic picture of him with just blood in his mouth, blood on his jersey, <laughs> and he's still pitching, right? Yeah. That would have never happened today. That person would have never stayed in the game today. Yeah. And so I wonder if that example, I wonder if it's just about trusting the players with their own body and not micromanaging every single detail and making sure that they're following all of the protocols. Cause it seems like even following all the protocols, they're still getting hurt. Cause like Spencer Strider, I'm sure is following all the protocols yeah. and he finds himself now on the IL and having to have surgery. So that, that was my initial thought when this conversation came up was, man, there was something that they were doing in the past that they're not doing now. And maybe it's just that paralysis by analysis. It's overanalyzing, not trusting the the body of the player like the angels did with Shohei Otani and allowed him to be who he is. He pitched and then he hit and then he pitched and then he hit and he was fine. Right. And, and I know that there's wear and tear on his elbow and he had to have, surgery again but and i know he's a unicorn so maybe he's inhuman right and so those those are my initial thoughts what about you well to go to your shohei otani point and and say that they were able to go you know hands off and not micromanage him it worked for a really long time yeah and then it didn't and so i just i don't think that there's a a, ben verlander got mad (laughs) he got mad at us mike um i just don't think that there's a a reasonable answer at the end of the day because Mm. you have that example of Hey, here's Otani, like, let him do his thing. So, and that kind of leans into your point. And then you have the ultimate micromanaged, you know, Steven Strasburg. Look at how things turned out for him. Yeah. You know, they micromanaged him to where was it he couldn't play, he couldn't pitch in the playoffs. Didn't mean the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. it, it just, there are two extremes. And like we said before, I think it's a lot more nuanced than just hands on, hands off. Plus, you go back to, you know, the Nolan Ryan days and whatnot. Those guys are, not throwing as hard as yeah. what these guys, and not just Nolan Ryan, I'm saying the whole league was not throwing as hard as what these guys are throwing now, but that's the emphasis on trying to be competitive, trying to add spin and curve and your elbow is throwing curve balls and everything like that. But to Jeff Passon's point, Mike, I think that's where it all starts. It starts in the little leagues because they're really just think about how competitive these little league organizations get and, you, you start so young and then these kids get into travel ball and then it's like, the, it's like their full-time job for the kids yeah. and the parents. Yeah. And it gets super serious because they all want to go somewhere and make the majors and it starts at a young age. But to me, I think if these kids are doing this sort of thing at a young age, even just throwing a fastball and just that repetitive motion, I think it kind of sets you up for failure in the future, not failure in that you won't succeed at baseball, but you might have some injuries along the way. So I, I do think that that's kind of the root cause is what little leagues and travel balls and high school and college ball are doing to these guys before they even get to the majors. And by the time they do get to the majors, the emphasis is on, you know, Oh, how sick can your stuff be? And how wicked is your splitter and how much spin rate is on your fastball, which is all great and strategic stuff. Yeah. But it puts a lot of wear and tear on these guys' bodies and their arms and the things that they're doing. Going back to SD's point about throwing at Max Velo, I saw like one of his first fastballs yesterday was 94, I think. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. looking at that in spring, I thought, ah, his Velo's just down. I think he's starting to do that on purpose. I think he's, like you said before, he's not using his best stuff right out of the gate. And that's actually something we saw with Shohei too. It was like, if he threw a fastball that was like 96 and he wanted to ramp it up to 101, he could right. do that. He had control right. over that. I think yeah. that's what made him so unique. But all of that to say, I think it's a number of things, but I do think that it starts really early with these guys. Plus, you have to think about how much data and analytics have caught up with what pitchers are doing. Because you might think, hey, we know the first two times through the order, Nolan Ryan does this. So. Let's do this the third time we see him. It, it could have been a whole different ball game back then had they had the information that they have now in order sure. to, to analyze and adjust. And, and that's the thing, Mike. Baseball is the game of adjustments. And so you're constantly having the, the pitching push forward and then hitting pushes back and it's back and forth like that. 
And as the league adjusts, they're trying to find weirder and different ways to make their pitchers effective. But I think it all kind of comes at the cost of longevity and keeping these guys in the game. Um, We spoke about it a few weeks ago, just with Jared Weaver and Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander, how long these guys would go into games and how many complete games they would have and whatnot. And very rarely do you see a complete game anymore. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a a different world, especially in the last decade pitching has changed tremendously. And so again, I think going back to Jeff Passon's point, I think it starts early and I think it's a mixture of a number of things, but I really think it's where these guys begin and where they are by the time they get to the majors that's affecting them. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels play the Rays today at 3.50. Love these early games. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Angels and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram, whether you're watching or listening. Come on over to today's show on YouTube. Find today's episode. Get in the comment section. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. It's the best way you can connect with Mike and I on YouTube in the comment section. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? John, we joke about, uh, about uh, getting trout, trout getting trout to the playoffs, right? Yes. Uh, tomorrow, we're just going to throw some names out there. Who who on this team can actually get Mike Trout to the playoffs? <laughs> Other Let's than himself? Is that Other than himself. <laughs> we'll include him. We'll include him. Yeah. But who else? Who else has that ability, that opportunity to get Trout to the playoffs? We're going to use a couple of different metrics to measure that, and we're going to share some names, and we would love for you to share some names in the comment section, and we might throw those into tomorrow's show on Locked on Angels. Looking forward to that. We hope you'll come back and join us. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Soriano. I hope he pitches well. I want to see him be the guy that he was a few weeks ago. Same.